your guys uh, assignment for Monday is to generate a single graph for me so what we're looking at here is humpback whales in the North Atlantic and I'll, again I'll share this paper so you guys you're more than welcome to read this paper it's a really cool paper um, but basically they go through and they look at historical data it's sometimes hard to find I've had a hard time finding really really good historical data it exists but a lot of this stuff is buried inside reports from the IWC and and it's it just it's um, there's a lot of interest in what the current levels are it's a ton of there's a wealth of interest if you guys want to know what the current levels of um, whales are both in terms of direct counts in terms of actual people seeing them for example some of you might have participated with dr uh, is, is anybody well, yeah, no, so there's, yeah, so we have our Hawaii project, our humpback whale project, but no, no, I'm talking about, um, we have, yeah, so we have a couple points along our coast. She did it in San Pedro. Okay, so yeah, so we, we have, we have, we have San Pedro observations, we have observations off the Santa Barbara coast, etc., where essentially volunteer spotters over the whole season are looking out 24 hours, well, not 24 hours a day, but, but all daylight hours and they're counting the number of whale spouts that go by. So we actually have direct counts of, indivi of individuals. So we have that way. We have data from acoustic monitoring networks. Um, did anybody go to the, the, the thing last, weekend at, or last week at the harbor? So we uh, were talking with the Navy about trying to do some research using some of their acoustic uh, networks. But basically, um, so we have, we have we can listen to whales, acoustically estimate their size, we can watch them. We can also do genetic analyses to look at the size of the population based on genetic markers. So there's a lot of information about how many whales we have now. How many whales there used to be, not as much data as we would like, at least not in, in, a, in a super friendly format that we could use. So this paper provided that. So, so that's why I'm focusing on humpbacks. And uh, what you find is this paper is about um, essentially how many whales we caught back in the day. And so these guys go through all these historical records, these historic whaling records, and they figure out how many whales we caught. So it's actually a really interesting read. They have a lot of historical documents in here, and they were going through uh, journal logs and things of that nature. Um, and da, 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 da. at the end here, they have um, uh, detailed data about the kind of uh, notes they were collecting and modern images of these guys. And then at the very, very end of the paper, they have their appendix. So we've talked about this a little bit in the sense in, in Capstone and various places. So this is where the paper ends on page 29 here. But a common practice is to create appendices. This wasn't that common back in the day, but now that we have so many, the, our default scientific correspondence is done online and it's essentially cheap, we can append extra things. In this case, these guys have appended uh, amongst other things, data. So, for example, um, uh, the number of humpback whales that were landed, meaning caught and brought to land to, to process, to sell or whatever, uh, going back from 1616. And so, really cool. So, what I've done is I've taken all of this data and I've put it in a uh, sheet for you. And so this says how many guys were captured. And so this is the year, and this is the number of individuals, and this is an estimate of the error, in this case, standard error. Um, because in some cases, they had to, they had to estimate how many guys were, were caught. And so um, what I would like you guys to do is generate a graph for me showing the history of Atlantic humpback landings over time. So that's that. So you should use Plotly. You guys should um, have one access be time and the other access number of individuals.
and you're going to tell me what the history of the exploitation. Now, to be sure, this is the number of individuals that were captured, not how many are out in nature. But nevertheless, this will give you some insight into the exploitation pressure on this particular fishery. Cool? That's that.